What is good Neo family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down what's going on with the overall market as we do have quadruple witching coming out tomorrow so it's going to lead to lots of volatility in the markets and possibly even more upside from here as I have been mentioning for quite a while. I'm going to break down how this may affect Neo's share price as well. And before I break anything down about why under tomorrow is going to be very interesting and quite crazy in my opinion, how it may affect Neo's share price when I do predict to happen, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Neo community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below in the description. We sign up for Moomoo with the link down below. And deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed 7 free stocks. And 5 out of those 7 free stocks could be a free Neo share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just two weeks. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So Neo is actually at a very critical level right now. I pointed this out yesterday. I'm actually recording this very close to uh, the market close. Neo has right here a very important resistance zone. This is where this blue trend line is that's acting as resistance. I told you all yesterday, the market would likely try to squeeze and Neo would likely get dragged up and Neo would likely fill the gap in the 8.4s. And I told you if Neo could break this, we're going to likely retest this trend line. That is where Neo is right now. But the question is, could Neo break above this? I think it's very possible Neo could try if we do actually get a clean break above the trend line, then this thing could fly to 8.72. I also told you that the market likely has upside for this week going into Thursday and Friday thanks to quadruple witching, but there's a big but, however, but there's no guarantee it's going to last forever because the fundamentals are not aligning with the market right now. And if the market does end up getting the quote unquote crash people are talking about, Neo will likely get dragged down pretty hard later on. I actually warned you all about that for the future going into the medium term. For the short term, though, I could see the market continue to push up for tomorrow. I want to break down exactly why. I have a white cough accumulation schematic. This is the second version of the schematic. Notice how there's a trend where we basically form a giant U. This is almost like a cup and handle from like this end to here. Uh, this is basically an accumulation where institutions drag the market down. They accumulate shares down here. Then they let the market ride. And that's what we're seeing on SPY. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Right here, this is pretty clean, pretty clear, and you can actually tell what is most likely going to happen just by looking at this. All right, so right here, we actually saw a bit of a pullback in the very beginning. Big pullback, this was our selling climax right here, bounced, and we had the sell test in phase B. Look at this you have the drop, selling climax, bounce, sell test in phase B, then you get a rebound. You come down again for the second last point of support, which is a higher low. Then you had the push up for the sign of strength or the SOS. What did we do? We got the first push up, which is in phase B. Last point of support, which is part of phase C. And then we entered phase D, which is where we get the push up. So it's, it's forming like a giant U with the big drop in the very beginning. Similar to this, big drop near the beginning, forming a giant U. And we just entered the SOS phase, which means we're most likely going to see phase E very soon, maybe even tomorrow, right? The market might just continue to rip going into tomorrow, and we could see SPY go for that 400 zone. It's very possible. And I do believe that Apple's going to help too. Apple's going for that 157, very important zone, 157.5. And for the triple Q, man, this thing was even more bullish than I suspected. Wow. It actually broke above 303. So now this thing has the potential to try to push for this 309. Super crazy stuff. Even more bullish than I suspected. Very, very amazing. Uh, in my opinion, the triple Q keeps going like this. If NASDAQ keeps going, if SPY keeps going, so long as NEO is not hit with any negative news, because so far I haven't seen anything too negative, NEO could try to keep going. I think NEO could try to go for 8.72. And if we break that, $9 is technically possible. But as I mentioned before, I'm not promising that this move is going to last forever. I just wanted to make all of this very clear. So why is the market going to pump tomorrow? Well, we have quadruple witching tomorrow. We actually have over 
uh, what is that? 3.2 million puts expiring for SPY tomorrow. And we have about 1.7, 1.8 million SPY calls expiring. Max pin at 396, 1.85 put to call ratio for tomorrow. The market makers are incentivized to pump the markets thanks to this. I mentioned this many, many times. And what are they doing? Well, what is the market doing right now? It's pumping. This is because of quadruple witching, the options expirations. I believe uh, because we're seeing moves like this, this is going to drag the whole market or at least the majority of the market. There's not too much data coming out. But I just want to remind everyone that when it comes to NEO and the whole market, fundamentals are not aligning with this move. Right? The European Central Bank just gave us a 50 basis point rate hike. This is not necessarily challenging the Fed, but it does actually show us that unexpected things could happen. And also, what is, I guess, sort of helping the market is the fact that a lot of the banks are getting some lifelines, some support uh, from different banks out there. They're, the FDIC is helping to build them out by selling assets and using that assets to essentially bail out uh, depositors, if anything, from Silicon Valley Bank. And then for Credit Suisse, they're actually borrowing about fifty-four billion dollars from the Swiss, the Swiss, excuse me, National Bank, and etc. So there are some good things coming out, but overall, fundamentals are still not aligning because inflation is high. We're entering a recession, most likely at this point. It's it's almost inevitable at this point, and there's still more banks in very dire situations. So be very careful and very cautious. For NEO, we have a relatively low price price ratio. I think this is going to try to balance a little bit since it's at a very low state, which means NEO could see some relief temporarily as we held $8 quite well. There's not really too much that's going on except for the fact that Fridays do have a tendency of being green 53% of the time. So there's a good chance NEO might be green tomorrow. And we did actually see short interest declining a bit. So now that short interest is declining, NEO did hold about $8. We are actually seeing the price finally starting to try to bounce a bit. It formed a really nice base. What isn't too good, though, is the volume is only 23 million as of right now. We're actually pretty close to close. So too much volume or like a lot of volume helps stocks run in a much more clean, natural manner. We are pumping on not the best of volume, which means short covering is playing a role in why NEO is pumping. And I also want to note that it's not going to be a huge pump. We're most likely not going to see this thing go up like 10%, 20%, you know, 15% unless we get more volume. So it, it is lacking some volume, which shows some weakness in the rally. Not the end of the world, though. Short volume is dropping a bit. Now it's at about 46%. So there is some buying pressure still there. Neo didn't really tweet anything new, but they are reminding us that they have strong fundamentals and the ET7 is amazing. In my opinion, I'm bringing this up because Neo has amazing cars. I love the fact that they're developing their technology in Silicon Valley. They're working very hard to give us new models. A potential like smartphone could be coming out. A lot of great things are still coming from the company and its fundamentals. We just need to work more on our margins and other factors like that. They may have to adjust some prices to be a lot more optimal. And other than that, though, I do believe Neo has immense potential for growth. And for the time being, I could see the share price try to push up with the market for now. Always remember that share prices are not the exact same thing as strong fundamentals for companies or weak fundamentals. Because of the fact that NEO has strong fundamentals, but the share price is relatively low compared to before. The reason it's down is because of the overall market. That's playing a much bigger role. And we're continuing to see the market just slide and slow down. We are still very undervalued compared to where we were in like 2020, 2021. So what do I see for tomorrow? I just want to note that for tomorrow, I think Neo should continue since we're trying to break out of this trend line. We could see Neo hit 8.72. If we break it, I think the $9 zone could come. This is awesome and all, but I must warn you all that there's no guarantee this move will last forever. Because later on, right, SPY and, and the whole market QQQ are going to pump most likely. If we get to this important zone, we might see SPY reject very soon around 400 to 401 if that breaks 406 is technically possible but i'm not expecting way too much more upside from here because a lot of banks are going through hardships like i said before and once the market sees reality everything could reverse when you least expect it all right institutions are pumping the market up because they're waiting to start shorting they want to short at much better prices be ready 
for the medium term, going into like April, May, June, there will likely be more downside, most likely. But for tomorrow, thanks to quadruple witching, expect more volatility and a bit of a pump, most likely, throughout the day. Because of the fact that we have a lot of those options expiring and the market makers are benefiting from pumping the markets and getting it to hold up. This will likely drag NEO up 8.72, break that, and there's about $9. It could even go higher than that, right? It is possible, but I just wanted to put this out there. So thank you all so much for listening. Have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. Remain calm, cool, and collected. I'll see you guys in the next one. Neo to the moon, and peace out.